I'm in my Azure DevOps server. We know that we haven't configured uh, the my Tiger application fully to finish the deployment into Elastic Beanstalk. So let's go into my Tiger application. And under the pipelines, we have edited my Tiger application sample pipeline to deploy into uh, S3. So this pipeline right now upload the artifacts into S3. The next obvious step is to make sure that it call Elastic Beanstalk to make a deployment out of that S3 artifact. So what I did was I added this uh, deploy to Elastic Beanstalk task. That task is available if you click add, and then search Elastic Beanstalk. You can find AWS Elastic Beanstalk deploy application task. So this is what I have added. So this one I already disabled. So let's enable this task. Go to control options, enable that so that this task get executed. So I give it a name, something like this. AWS credentials, we are not going to provide here. We already know that there are multiple ways to provide these credentials. We are going to provide this credential as part of uh, the build machine instance profile. Region is Sydney region, which I'm working in. In your case, it may be different. Application name is an application name that I have given in last week Beanstalk. So here the application name is my tiger application and the environment is my tiger app dash due. So let's fill that my tiger application environment name is my tiger application dash due. So what's the deployment bundle to type? It's going to be an existing deployment model in Amazon S3. Uh, you can define a different one, but in this case, I'm going to select an S3 source. Deployment bundle bucket is going to be my uh, S3 bucket where I deploy these artifacts. So that's, I have already configured here. The location of this one is uh, going to be my build artifact bucket, which I published them. And if you go into your S3, you can find that I have a bucket called my build artifacts. Under that, my tie gap deliveries. And this is the place we are going to dump those deliveries, which we are going to take from here. Bucket name is my build artifact. And uh, the deployment bundle object key has to be my tiger app deliveries, which I put this one in a folder and my tiger app and the build number so that I can locate where on the bucket that my delivery is, my tiger app deliveries my build artifact, my tie gap deliveries, and under that, I'm going to create the zip files. Seems good. Version label, I put as the build number so that I can identify which build correspond to which uh, Elastic Beanstalk deployment. And I'm going to give it a description like this. So save this. There's one more thing to define. The build machine has to have Elastic Beanstalk deployment permission. If it does not, this task is going to fail. So let's add Elastic Beanstalk deployment permission into my build machine. Under EC2, I have three running instances. One of this one is build machine. And I go to the IAM permissions and add the Elastic Beanstalk uh, deployment permissions. So IAM role is this. Let's open it a new tab. So in the IAM role of the EC2 instance of the build machine, you can find that Amazon S3 full access is already given. So this is something we added when we created part of our previous pipeline. Uh, we need to give some additional extra permissions for this build machine to deploy into Elastic Beanstalk. So let's go and attach uh, some policies. If you want to give full access to Elastic Beanstalk, you can give uh, Elastic uh, Beanstalk uh, full access. So you have uh, something called uh, Elastic Beanstalk full access. But if you give this permission, uh, if you look at this JSON file, you can find that it gives uh, EC2 full access also. But in this case, let's say uh, I don't want to give that. I want to give more fine grained permissions in a way that um, 
this instance will not have access to provision any EC2 instance, but I want to give, let's say, fine grained principles. So I have already given some roles that you can attach into this uh, build machine. So if you go into uh, the filtered policies and then select uh, custom uh, customer manage policies uh, and then uh, search for that, you can find that there are two policies that I have given. One is called uh, my tiger app policy part one and my tiger app policy part two. Uh, so there's a limit uh, on the number of characters that can be in an IAM policy and that's why there are two uh, policies that I have defined here. So if you explore this policy, uh, you can find that uh, it's more granular in what it provisions. So for example, it tells which region that you can provision that, uh, what are the permissions allowed uh, in this uh, permission. Uh, so it's more granular one uh, and same for the part two, which is an uh, which is created because I ran out of uh, the maximum limit of a policy file and so I created another policy. So here you can find that I have defined a fine grain permission saying that, hey, uh, you cannot run any instance, but you are limited only to these instance types, right? So uh, what I'm going to do is to instead of attaching uh, AWS defined policy, I'm going to attach these two policies, uh, my tiger policy part one and part two into my build machine. So click attach policy. So you can find that I have attached these two policies uh, along with Amazon S3 full access. So my build machine will have enough permissions to deploy into Elastic Beanstalk. At the same time, this is a fine grained permission. So it will not allow uh, you to spin up large EC2 instances. So I'm going to execute the pipeline by queuing a new one. My pool is AWS build pool and queue a new build. So this will kickstart a new queue. So let's go into that one and then see what happens. So it's uh, running the um, build, it's doing the normal restoration, executing the build, publishing the artifacts, uploading to S3 bucket, then calling Elastic Beanstalk deploy task. So let's go to Elastic Beanstalk and check what happens. So if you go into Elastic Beanstalk, you can find that my tiger app development is under gray condition. You can find a new environment is being updated. After a while, this will turn green and your application will be ready. If you look at my tiger application and then look at application versions, you can find that the version label came from my build uh, deployment, which in this case is going to be uh, 2019.0243. So I know this is the build that deployed. You can find that version label description, which I gave there. Date created, this is a zip file. So it's still under deployment. So let's go and then wait for a bit. So the deployment is completed. So let's go there and then open it a new tab. You can find my welcome version two is deployed. So now let's execute a full deployment as a developer would do just to uh, do the final checks. If I go into my pipelines, edit it, and then clock triggers, make sure that you have enabled uh, continuous integration so that every time when somebody commits it, it get automatically built. Let's now open this uh, solution. So I open Visual Studio Code. Let's open the folder. Application is my tie app. Select it. Let's make a modification to index CSGML. So instead of calling welcome version two, let's call it welcome version three. Full pipeline is done. So we save that message. And then I can see uh, there's a changes that has been modified, which I have added that. So let's call it uh, uh, change the message. Click save. And then make a push.
So this committed, ideally it should start a new build. You can find a new build is running behind the scene. It kick started automatically. It's now running the build behind the scene. And after a while, if I go into my Elastic Beanstalk application, this will turn into gray, indicating that the deployment is running. You can find that the deployment is running behind the scene. So at some point in time, um, it will turn into green. And let's check whether our changes have been reflected. So the environment has been updated successfully. So if I go into this URL and then refresh it, so you can find that uh, the new message is appearing. So we managed to create a pipeline that will automatically deploy the version from start to the end, from the time the developer commits the message. Hope you enjoyed this session.